Before we begin this devlog, please excuse me. Hi everyone, let me just say that you are all awesome. This week we hit 100 subs and I'm so happy to be here with another video. We have a lot to go through today, so let's not waste another second. In the last video you could see that there's a lot of work that needs to be done before I have a playable demo. This week I jump straight into the implementation of the features. Some of you might have noticed that the way I'm building the shops right now is that I lay down each side of the wall separately and then on top of that selecting the shop area separately as well. This approach is kind of... meh. You know, why making things easier when you can make them complicated? But that is no more. I had many ideas but it ultimately came down to one obvious option. Instead of building walls and shop area separately, my plan was that I should simply be able to select the shop area and let the game generate the walls for me. But how do you do that? The way the shop area works right now is that you are placing rectangular objects on the ground that represents the selected area. In order to build the walls, I had to find the objects that were around the edges. But how do you do that? I actually opened up the chat with a friend, let's call him Mike, and I said, Hey Mike, I have a problem. <laughs> yeah, I know, good luck with that. Okay, here is how you do it. You have an array of objects, right? Just go through them and one by one check if they have a neighbor. If they have all four neighbors, you know this object is in the middle. If they have less than four neighbors, you know they are on the edge. That is... actually very simple, I don't know why haven't I thought about it so no. Okay then, after a few hours of focused coding... Next! So, we now have a shop. But this is a tycoon, not a builder game. We need some stats, graphs and management. Right now, there's absolutely nothing. But right now, it's only Wednesday and I still have two days left before filming the devlog, so let's make a shop dashboard. You could see some images of the dashboard previously on my Twitter or Discord, but those were only just illustrations. But today, we're implementing the real deal. The way the Unreal's user interface system works is that you make a bunch of images in other software and then import them into Unreal and then just make sure everything lines up correctly. Sounds simple, right? You see these little graphs up in here? I've spent too much time getting them to work, so if you want to make something similar in your game, here's very quickly my solution. The line graph is made by overriding the onPaint function and calling the drawLine node over and over. And some mathematic calculations. A lot of calculations. This radial progress bar is made by dynamic materials. It's not my invention, so I will put the link for that in the description. And this graph is simply a bunch of progress bars next to each other. Next! No, actually not so quickly. You see these products in here? Well, there's only one copied five times over and over. This shop needs some products and the Discord server had a great idea. Hey, let's name the products ourselves. So I set up a simple Google form and here are some products that people came up with. Max Game Go, one of the best gaming laptops on the market. Two wheels. You don't want to be late anymore? Travel at the speed of light thanks to two wheels. Microwave X, the simplest microwave in the world. That's exactly what you want.
If you'd like to be part of the development like this, the link to Discord is in the description. Right now there's already 40 of us and we are very happy for everyone who joins. Optimization time! Yes, again, as almost every week. Well, there's not too much optimization that you can ever do. Our today's candidate for optimization is pavement object. Or floor, or whatever you wanna call it. 30 FPS, bad. The problem is that when I cover the whole level with this thing, the game just can't handle to render so many objects at once. So let's see, this will cost us exactly this much divided by 4. We're left with... Oh. In the third video on this channel I already made some improvements by disabling the tick event and enabling the HDB occlusion. But it's obviously not enough. The solution? Instancing. You see the problem with thousands of objects is that for every single object you have one or more draw calls depending on how much materials you use. With instances the number of draw calls is effectively reduced to one. The problem is that I want to have the objects separated because I want to be able to select them and edit them among other things. With instances you can do that. But how do you do that? Simple. Do you know how there are chunks in Minecraft? We will do something similar. Sort of. Let's divide the level into sections. Each section has its own instance object with many instances. But because it's an instance object, there will be only one draw call per section. Okay, it will not be only one draw call because there are many sections, but it's much better than this. Now, how do you make those instances selectable? We will actually generate two objects. One will be our normal actor that we can select and edit, and another will be our instance. Only instances will be visible. When I click add the instance, I will immediately hide the instances and show the actual objects. Sure, it will increase the draw calls again, but it will be still better than they. Then after I deselect the object, I will hide all of them and instead show instances again. I hope that makes sense. Basically what it means is that we will be switching between instances and real actors. Now let's look at how the game runs with the world covered with instances instead of actors. Nice. 